What's going on guys? Dylan Conrad, Coach Con Diesel. Um, today I'm gonna talk about cheat meals, cheat days. Before I do that, um, follow me on Instagram. I'll put the uh, handle right there at coach underscore Con Diesel. Um, like, subscribe to the channel, all helps the algorithm. My goal is obviously to help more people like you, more people that I get to subscribe and all that stuff. Helps the algorithm, helps me more, help more people. So, um, cool. So I'm gonna get into a couple things today. <clears throat> and this has been like a very long debated, you know, should you have cheat meals? Should you not have cheat meals? Should you have cheat days? Um, I'm gonna talk about what each of them are. Um, my experience coaching them, should you implement them? What type of people they're best for? Um, I'm gonna go into like the benefits of having them. Um, are they a good fit for you specifically? Um, and how to strategically implement both to have a um, solid diet structure, okay? So a cheat meal is basically, uh, you know, how I define it and how most people are defining it is anything that's not um, considered a healthy food. So, um, you know, we're looking at cookies, candy, um, bread, like, you know, not bread, bread, not like wheat bread, but like, you know, you go to a restaurant and have like table bread, like that type of thing. Um, so what is a cheat day? Cheat day is where you go completely full day um, of just eating unhealthy foods. And so, you know, what I typically consider like a cheat meal and like a diet structure is 80% of your foods are coming from clean, healthy foods. The other 20 are coming from, you know, things that aren't considered healthy um, or, uh, you know, a clean. Why this works so well and why it helps is it just helps you uh, adhere better to your diet structure, whether you're staying in a caloric deficit, whether it's paleo, keto, whatever diet model you're following, it'll help you adhere to that better. Cheat days, on the other hand, are basically anything more than 20% um, of your calories coming from you know unclean foods. I think people describe cheat days as like every single meal is something dirty, but for me, it's usually 50-50, and that, that's what seems to work for myself and a lot of my clients as well. So um, I'm gonna show you how to structure both, are you a good fit for them, all that stuff. Um, before that, I wanna talk to you guys about the benefits. So I kind of mentioned there, you know, it helps you ad adhere to whatever your diet model is. Um, you know, eating clean, eating healthy food, it doesn't taste that great, right? I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Obviously, there's ways to make it taste great, um, but it gives you like a psychological break from the monotony of the taste of foods. Um, you know, obviously, you're getting a physiological response in terms of like cognitively. Um, and, you know, anything that can increase your adherence to your diet long term, such as cheat meals, cheat days, those are really gonna help you in the long run. Um, it also, you know, if, if you're eating typically the same five or 10 foods throughout the week, which we typically do if we're on a diet, um, a lot of times we're missing like key micronutrients. If we have a cheat day, you know, those those foods that we have aren't completely deprived of any nutrient value. A lot of them will fill in the gaps of stuff that we're missing, so it may help in that regard. Um, so should you be having cheat meals or cheat days? This is like a common question. Some of my clients personally, um, you know, they, they don't have cheat days. Some, some of them have cheat days, some of them have cheat meals, some don't have cheat meals. Um, it just depends on the person. Um, for me personally, there's certain foods, um, as far as cheat foods, I stay away from because I know it'll just send me into a tailspoon, tailspin. Um, for me personally, I don't do anything or recommend anything more than like 50% of your, your overall calories for the day coming from cheat foods, especially if it's a deficit, you know, the, the foods, the unhealthy foods are really calorically dense and you don't have to eat much to have a ton of calories in your system. So, you know, 300 calories of salad is gonna look a lot different than 300 calories of cookie. You know, salad's like this big, cookie's like this big, you know, it's not gonna fill up your stomach. So I like to do 50-50 because um, it allows you to get those volume as food so you feel full and then you can accompany it with something that's, you know, like a milkshake or, um, you know, pizza or whatever it is that you actually enjoy, okay? Um, so should you, should you do it yourself? It just depends, you know, I have um, a lot of clients that are just like really, really fast eaters. Um, so, you know, their cheat food turns into a full binge. I would just make sure that you're notating in your head which one, um, which type of foods you're more, most likely to binge on. So if I'm in a deficit, I'm hungry, I'm gonna go towards something lighter like Oreos. 
um, cause they're, they're, they're sweet, but they're not crazy sweet. If I go something like, um, you know, cookies, or if I go to like a cake that is going to send me into a binge mode. So first of all, stay away from the binge foods. Um, and obviously this can be different from person to person. Um, and if any type of sweets or any pizza or whatever it is sends you into binge, probably stay away from cheat meals or cheat, cheat days. Um, as far as, you know, if, if you kind of, my wife, for example, she eats very intuitively. She knows when she's full. She knows when she's hungry. She doesn't have overeating problems. Um, she doesn't block her food. She just intuitively knows how many calories that she needs. So if you're that type of person that doesn't have a problem overeating, I'd say cheat days or cheat meals are totally fine for you. And I definitely recommend them in there. Okay. Um, it, and also I'm talking to someone whose goal is fat loss. If your goal is health, I probably wouldn't have any cheat meals or cheat days. Um, and if you do, I'd probably keep 5% maybe. And so when I'm talking about 5% and say you're on a, you know, just a maintenance calorie load, say you're eating like you're, you're a man, you're 180 pounds, your maintenance calories at 2,800. Um, I would say 5% of those can come from unclean foods. And that doesn't have to be in a full day. That can actually be in a full week. So there's a kind of two ways to look at that. Um, and same thing with your cheat meals. You know, I'm saying I recommend no more than 20%. So if you're looking at 20% of your calories and you are on a 2000 calorie diet, 20% of your calories would be uh, about 400 calories, right? Um, but if you want to kind of add those up, you can do one every other day for like 800 calories. And again, just make sure you are adding high volume, um, low calorie foods so you can feel fuller throughout the day. Um, okay, cool. Now I'm gonna dive into how to structure a cheat meal. So 20%, um, basically just take your calories uh, and you take 20% of those and that is your maximum ceiling um, for, the, for the cheat meal. You can also, again, do them every other day, every other day. And of course, if you're doing like a 50-50 uh, cheat meal, cheat day, sorry, if you're doing something higher than like 20%, um, that's gonna be considered a cheat day. So basically you just take 50% of your calories, um, you know, either for the week or for the day, and you can basically just make them a little bit dirty, okay? Um, if you're gonna do a cheat day, I would recommend like once a week, maybe being the top of what you're gonna choose. So. Um, make sure you set your, your calories because like you can't have a cheat day where you just, I think most people in the field just be like, oh, just eat whatever you want today. I mean, you're just gonna negate all the, the progress that you made that week. So you have to have a calorie ceiling on that day. And so what you can do is you can actually go into your maintenance calories. So say, you know, you're in a deficit of 2200, but your maintenance is 2800. Um, you can eat 2800 calories on your maintenance that day. So you can have a little bit more wiggle room on the 50% of the foods that you are eating. But definitely don't go above maintenance because that will cause uh, weight gain. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. So use that, use the percentages, use calories for sure. Um, that will cause you to not gain weight. It'll also cause you to just basically stay on track and adhere and continue to see results and progress week after week. It's a really good psychological break. It breaks with the monotony, um, gives you something to look forward to because you know eating, eating just clean food all the time is just not a sustainable model for a lot of people out there. Um, but you know, again, if your goal is overall health, eating unhealthy foods is going to add a lot of inflammation, a lot of sugar to your body. Uh, it's going to change your glucose levels. So probably if your goal is overall body health, um, you know, I, I'd probably just use like a 5% if at all. So anyways, hope this helps reading my notes the whole time. So I hope uh, you don't mind me looking down occasionally, um, like subscribe to the channel, uh, comment below. Love to hear your thoughts on this. Again, follow me on Instagram, coach con diesel. Enjoy the rest of your day.